We take a look at River Murray netball now on the Friday Night Sports Show. And as per usual, our River Murray netball correspondent, Hannah Lola, joins me on the line. How are you, Hannah? Yeah, fabulous, Dan. A bit of rain about. So for farming families, we're all happy on, on this week. Yes, good news for farming families. Probably not so good news for netball players, though, playing on the outdoor courts. But like we say most weeks, it is a winter sport, so you get what you sign up for sometimes with the weather. And we're only a couple of weeks out from finals now across all our uh, divisions and age groups here in the River Murray Netball Association. Yeah, so Dan, we're two weeks of netball left to play. And really interesting that in all of our senior grades, um, in the five grades, none of the top four are locked in. So there's still live matches and everyone's eagerly watching what's happening at other courts to know whether they're going to make a, have a finals berth. So it's a good spot to be in. Um, in the junior comp, it's not quite the same. So um, all but junior one, um, those teams are set in stone. So the juniors will be just um, you know, making their way to finals, knowing where they're going to be, um, but yeah, certainly really good um, contests yet to come across the senior grades. And, and one in particular, um, I think, to watch will be a, a B-grade game out at, um, which will be played at Imps, but um, it's uh, a Jervois player, Nikki Smith, is going to take the court for her 500th game, which is, if you count the seasons, that means, um, it means she's She's not just past her junior years. Um, yeah, she's played, um, I think, 30 games for Manham um, and the rest of those 470 um, for her beloved blood, the Jervois Netball Club. And not just a, a, a lovely player, she contributes to the association and gives back and there'll be a lot of love around the court um, for her on Saturday. That is a hell of a lot of games, 500. I certainly don't think my body could handle that many games. I don't think there's too many people out there that could. So that is, you're right, that is a massive achievement and a big congratulations to her. And we're getting into the round 17 action this weekend. Like you said, two weeks left. But before we do, we'll have a look back at the results from round 16. And it kicked off with the Weather Event Cup, as we so hilariously named it, between the Storm and the Suns. And it was the Storm getting the win 41-29 to and moving within, well, one game back in the loss column or level on points and behind on percentage, I should say, of the Suns in fourth place. So a good battle happening there between those rivals for that last spot in the finals. Totally, Dan, and I've been waiting to use this line. It was very bleak at peak. Oh. So no, no sun shining there. Brilliant. Um, yeah, it was a margin that was slightly more than we anticipated going into this game. Um, Kiara Pate um, played a ripper. Um, and interestingly, the Storm's, you know, new recruit, Neil Gray, um, so she's had that Premier League experience. So up against Liv Clark from the Suns, who normally dominates in defence, created a bit more of an even contest. So the Storm keep their season alive and um, and Suns, yeah, will um, reflect on that loss um, and move forward and, and hope their season does still continue into finals. All right, so that was a good, important win for the Storm there and definitely looking forward to seeing how the season shapes out over the last couple of weeks for those two teams as they fight for that fourth spot on the ladder. We'll look to our next game. The Imperials kept their unbelievable season going with a good win over Taylor Bend, 61-38. to So still just the one loss for the season for the Imperials? Yeah, so um, I was at this game... Yeah, it's impressive from, you know, from the first pass. It looked good. Their goal shooter, Kalari Doki, she's, she's quick. She's to get the ball in the ring. You don't get a lot of time to defend her. And they've got a fabulous um, defender in Kayla Dallamole. And she just uh, reads the play well, intercepts nicely. And I think Kayla won't be too upset with that score line, um, it was only 12 goals at half time. Taylor are missing their key, um, their gun shooter, Mel Edwards. So they had a, a young combination in their goal ring who stepped up on the day and I think did pretty well. They they were matching it in the last quarter. It was probably 
took the foot off a little bit. But yeah, so I think Taylor can be proud that they kept him to that sort of 60 goal mark as they march on to finals. And one of the other games we had a close eye on going into this round was Maipo and Manham. We wanted to see if Manham could sort of match it with those top two, and it looks like they're a little bit off the pace. Maipo winning that one 46-36, and same as the Imps, they've lost just one game for the season. Yeah, so 10 goals, probably about what it was the time before when they met. And, yeah, as you say, I think it, it's showing that top two um, are stretching out um, Eden Thomas from my post, she's um, a great goalkeeper, um, plenty of intercepts there and, and, and puts a bit of a, a watch on um, the young goal shooter Phoebe Wegner from Manham. Um, and then, but then from Manham, their centre, Amy Schultz, played a, a really good game against Kelly Altman, who's just normally dynamite. Um, Interestingly for Maipo, um, their coach this year has been Peter Thomas, who came out of the Premier League from Matric. And um, this week we've heard the announcement that he's been appointed as the Premier League head coach for Oakdale. So it'll be a bit of a watch this space for um, what happens in the coaching ranks at Maipo. But whoever steps in, or if he stays on, or whoever steps in is going to take over a pretty good outfit, um, considering they knocked Manham off by 10. All right, so a big appointment there. Congratulations are in order. And you're right, that will that will certainly uh, have a bit of a ripple effect on the competition. And we'll look to our final game of the round, which was the Ramblers getting a narrow win over the Kurong Cats, 38-32. to Yeah, so... Six goals, not a lot. Um, so the Cats will take um, a bit of um, prompt. You know, they'll they'll be pleased with that, and it'll give um, a, a, a good bolst to some of their junior players who have had a tough year with some pretty big losses. Uh, there was um, the teams had two, you know, each won two quarters, so obviously really even. It was just that last quarter. The experience of Helene Altman um, shooting and Lucinda Howell, who's a really strong um, attacking player for Ramblers, uh, got them over the line. But yeah, a couple of young players, um, the Cats in Brooke Francis and Bridget Watson, played well. So um, the back end of the season um, is, was looking a bit brighter for them than the start. All right, and we'll look ahead to our round 17 action, and it's kicking off with the Ramblers hosting Taylor Bend. Yeah, so this one, at last time these teams met, uh, Taylor Bend won by two goals. Um, I think even though Taylor will be missing Mel Edwards again, um, I think their play last week um, showed that they should be able to win that one. Even though Ramblers will have the home court advantage, I think I'll pick Talon to um, take that game out. All right, and the Imperials will look to keep their brilliant season going with what you would think would be a win over Javois. Yeah, uh, last time they met, it was a 43-goal win, I think. Um, and I think uh, it'll be a good win. Uh, it will be a, a good day for Jervois to celebrate Nikki Smith in the B grade, uh, but I don't think the A grade girls will get the points in this one. Uh, in, this is their last match. They have to buy in the last round, so they'll want to put in a good performance um, before they get a week off to rest up for finals. All right, and we've got Maipo taking on the Kurong Cats. So 13-1 and one Maipo versus the 1-13 and 13 Kurong Cats. Inverse of records there, and it should be an easy win for Maipo at Meningi. Yeah, um, I think it'll be... Um, Maipo will enjoy the trip down, um, the views of the Kurong and Lake Alexandrina, um, and they will come home with a fairly comfortable win Um they won't be able to close the percentage to take top spot. Um, the, the difference is too great, but they'll comfortably sit in second. Certainly is a beautiful part of the world there on the Coorong, and they will enjoy that trip, no doubt. And then our last match, the match of the round, without a doubt, Manham taking on the Mallee Storm. So we just said Manham struggled to mix it with those top two teams, losing by 10 to Maipo. So can the Mallee Storm cause, well, I'm not quite sure if we'd call it an upset, but do you think the Mallee Storm can win this one at Manham? 
Well, I think it would be called an upset and I'm going to pick it because the Storm, they've got everything to play for. This is their season on the line for the, the second week in a row. Uh, they are coming strong. Um, that win last week, you know, was really promising. They've got a couple of uh, new, newer players at the back end of the season who are settling and I think, yeah, I'm going to pick Storm by a couple of goals in an upset. Everything to play for, you're right. A win puts them into the four. A loss keeps them just on the outer by percentage. They do have the Cats in the last round. Southern Suns, who they're fighting for that last spot with Have Manum. So certainly still a good chance to make the finals, even if they do drop that one this weekend. But last round of the season, you just never know, and you don't want to be leaving your fortunes up until that last round and worrying about other results. So they'll certainly want to get that win this weekend and try and lock in a final spot. Very exciting times here as we get into the last couple of weeks. Are you heading out to any of the games this weekend, Hannah? Uh, yeah, I'll be at the Ramblers v Taylor match. Um, yeah, it should be a great day. Um, hopefully the sun will shine like it didn't last week. It was a pretty dreary old day at Netball last week, so hopefully a nicer day. Um, and I look forward to talking all the results with you next week. Very good. Enjoy the Netball and we'll catch up next week.